Quantum computing, what is it? Is it useful? How did it start? And can it better society in the future? To find out more, we need to go to the quantum realm. Just kidding. But if you want to know more, watch this video. Hello everyone, I'm MG Sanga, the creative engineer, and today we're going to talk about quantum computing. But before we go to quantum computing, why don't I give you an understanding of quantum mechanics? Now quantum mechanics is the branch of mechanics that deals with the mathematical description of the motion and interaction of subatomic particles, incorporating the concepts of quantization of energy, wave particle duality, and the uncertainty principle and the corresponding principle. In short, it's a branch of physics that deals with the behavior of matter and light on a subatomic and atomic level. Applications of quantum mechanics include explaining phenomena found in nature as well as developing technologies that rely on quantum effects like integrated circuits and lasers. It's also critically important in understanding how individual atoms are joined by covalent bonds to form molecules. The application of quantum mechanics in chemistry is known as quantum chemistry. By the way, I'll be saying quantum a lot, not like Ant-Man and Endgame, but at least you'll get the gist of it. Quantum mechanics can also provide quantitative insight into ionic and covalent bonding processes by explicitly showing which molecules are energetically favorable to each other and the magnitudes of energies involved. Now that we know a little bit of quantum mechanics, why don't we now define quantum computing? Quantum computing is a multidisciplinary field comprising aspects of computer science, physics, and mathematics that utilize quantum mechanics to solve complex problems faster than classical computers. In layman terms, it's a rapidly emerging technology that uses quantum mechanics to solve problems too complex for classical computers. Yes, even your RTX 4090 can't keep up with the number of Chrome tabs it can open. Quantum computing became possible with the introduction of wave particle duality in the early 1900s and digital computers emerging and becoming better and faster. It was in World War II when quantum physics became essential because of nuclear physics, creating projects such as the Manhattan Project. And by 1980, Paul Bernioff introduced what is known as the quantum Turing machine, which used quantum theory to describe a simplified computer. Now, as computers became more faster, it was theorized that hardware based on quantum phenomena might be more efficient for computer simulations. It was later in 1945 when quantum algorithms were created to help solve complex problems. Algorithms such as the Deutsch algorithm, which was created in 1985, the Beinstein-Vizorani algorithm, which was created in 1994, and the Siemens algorithm, which was also created in 1994, were algorithms used to solve complex problems in quantum mechanics, or rather quantum computing. Now these algorithms didn't really solve practical problems but they did demonstrate that you could mathematically gather information. Now, over the years, technology has become better and the parts needed to create quantum computing has now become possible to make. And because of this, in 2019, NASA and Google AI achieved quantum supremacy by creating a 54 qubit machine that can solve complex problems impossible for any classical computer. So now we know a little bit of the history of quantum computing. How do they actually work? Firstly, computer engineers typically describe a modern computer's operation in terms of classical electrodynamics. With these classical computers, some components such as semiconductors and random number generators may rely on quantum behavior. However, these components are not really isolated from the environment, so quantum information decoheres or decays. Secondly, Programmers may depend on probability theory when designing randomized algorithms. Quantum mechanical motions like superposition and interference are largely irrelevant for program analysis. So to solve these issues, quantum programming was made. Yes, they just put quantum in front of programming, I know right? In contrast, quantum programming relies on precise control of coherent quantum systems. 
Physicists describe these systems mathematically using linear algebra. Yes, it is used outside of high school. And using complex numbers to model probability amplitudes, vectors to model quantum states, and matrices to model the operation that can be performed in these states. Programming a quantum computer is a matter of composing operations in such a way that the resulting program computes a useful result in theory and is implementable in practice. To do this, quantum computers use what is known as qubits. These carry information in a quantum state that engage ones and zeros in a multidimensional way, meaning that it can be one and zero at the same time. Unlike classical computers, which can only process a zero or a one individually. Because zeros and ones can be processed at the same time, the power of quantum computers can grow exponentially with more qubits used. This also allows quantum computers to process things faster and produce more results. Now in this process, there are two features that are used to help quantum computing process faster and produce faster results. Number one is superposition. A qubit places the quantum information it contains into a state of superposition. This refers to the combination of all possible configurations for the qubit. Groups of qubits in superposition can create complex multidimensional computational spaces. Complex problems can be represented in new ways in these spaces. And at number two, we have entanglement. Entanglement is integral to quantum computing power. Pairs of qubits can be made to become entangled. This means that two qubits can exist in a single state. Because of this, changing one qubit can affect the other qubit in a way that's predictable. Now, quantum algorithms are designed to take advantage of this relationship to solve complex problems. Now, while doubling the number of bits in a classical computer doubles its processing power, adding qubits results in an exponential upswing in computing power and ability. By the way, why don't you hit the like button and the subscribe button in order to get entangled into my upcoming videos. Now back to this video, quantum computing has many advantages in society. Financial institutions may be able to use quantum computing to design more effective and efficient investment portfolios for retail and institutional clients. Coming to the healthcare industry, they could use quantum computing to develop new drugs and genetically targeted medical care. It could also power more advanced DNA research. For stronger online security, Quantum computing can help design better data encryption and ways to use light signals to detect intruders in the system. Quantum computing can be used to design more efficient and safer aircraft and traffic systems. Now, don't get me wrong, it is a very good technology, but like any other technology that just started, it has some issues. For example, decoherence and decay which can be caused by the slightest disturbance in a qubit environment. This can result in the collapse of computation or the errors to them. Error correction during the computation stage has not really been perfected. This kind of makes computations very unreliable. Since qubits aren't really digital bits of data, they can benefit from error correction caused by classical computers. And according to the global energy leader, Ibadola, quantum computers must have no atmospheric pressure, an ambient temperature close to absolute zero, and an insulation from the Earth's magnetic field to prevent atoms from moving, colliding with each other, or even interacting with the environment. There are so many issues to deal with that a few quantum computers actually exist on this Earth. But a wise man once said, I'm limited by the technology of my time. And if you think about it, that's the case with every researcher, engineer, and scientist. We are living in an era where there's advanced technology, but we're still limited because not many things can be built during this era. However, like fusion technology, it will take time for something stable to be actually made. And it could take a year or two or even 20 years. But as for now, we will keep on taking a step to improve what we already have. So I leave you with this question. Will quantum computing ever be fixed? Will it be stabilized? Will it be something that you can easily buy in a store? Let me know in the comments below. 
And if you want to watch about jet engines, you can click my video right here. By the way, if you really enjoyed this video and found it very informative, please hit the like button and subscribe for my upcoming content. I'm really happy that you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again in my upcoming video soon. Have a great week and God bless you.